hello again welcome back and if you're new here welcome for the first time this is Chrissy at a little glam a lot of mom in today's video I am going to share our gentle homeschooling basket during times when we need to slow down we recently took this approach after the holiday break gently easing our way into january we also enjoy doing this for certain holidays and festivals of the year and if you saw my most recent video you may remember that this basket lives tucked under one of our homeschool shelves empty and available so when the kids see that this basket has been curated and is on our rug they know to expect a lot of reading uh, story time finger plays handcrafts poetry tea time some recipes that's usually my focus for this basket I started preparing this basket and we will be diving into it the few days leading up to Valentine's Day We made this watercolored heart garland last year, February, and so I'm going to restring it so that we can decorate with it again this year. Uh, that's such a super simple but beautiful and gentle Valentine's Day activity. All it requires is some watercolor paper, either some watercolor pigments or a palette, uh, whichever is easiest for you. Hole punch and stringing it through. I always put loose parts in our baskets, color coordinated preferably uh, for math activities. And these are from the Grapat Mandala collection. Our first activity is always a seasonal display. So here we have a Sarah's silk in uh, play silk in pink tied onto a wooden ring because that's what I will use to hang it. Bella and I made this February fairy several years ago and she needs to be retouched uh, with a felting needle here in some parts so we'll do that and then I will restring uh, some thread on her and hang her on our seasonal display as well. We also have a seasonal table display card from Hearth Magic. It's not a seasonal display for us without a beeswax candle uh, and it sits on this special doily made by one of our great grandmas. I have our Stockmar modeling wax here because the kids will mold tiny hearts out of the wax to decorate our Valentine's Day beeswax candle. The basket is centered around this book this year, The Valentine Bears by Eve Bunting and illustrated by one of our favorites, Jan Brett. I love the story of these bears serving one another, centered on love, of course, uh, and it also opens up a discussion for hibernation. So it reads, Dear Mr. Bear, you are my Valentine. Mr. and Mrs. Bear always slept right through Valentine's Day, but this year Mrs. Bear has a surprise for Mr. Bear and he just might have something planned for her too. I love these whimsical illustrations and funny enough, our local zoo has a rescued female bear who is in the age to bear cubs so they noticed that she was starting to den uh, the zookeepers created the beginnings of a foundation of a den for her and for her to finish and installed a camera inside so she finished off the den herself with natural materials and has been hibernating for three weeks and we get to watch this via a live video outside of her habitat at the zoo. It's incredible, something we wouldn't be able to observe otherwise, obviously, um, without these amazing conservation efforts. And so it's just wonderful that we can uh, relate these real life experiences to our schooling. We read A String of Hearts by Laura Malone Elliott every year. And so it read Valentine's comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Some are homemade and some are store-bought. Some are funny and some are not. Sam wants to give just the right Valentine to the most popular girl in class. One of our crafts this year will be homemade Valentine's Day cards for our homeschool group. So this is the perfect read to kick off that activity. And then two books to follow on the hibernation topic the Valentine Bears leads with, The Snowy Map, written and illustrated by Jan Brett. I mentioned this in our favorite winter books. One of our favorite Jan Brett's title, uh, this is just a winter classic, and so Hedgie tries to stay awake so he doesn't miss out on all the snowy fun his friends are having on the farm. And Over and Under the Snow by Kate Messner. This book explores the subnivian zone, revealing tunnels, 
dens, caves where many animals hibernate or adapt and keep safe during winter. I gush about the series of children's picture books all the time here on my channel. They're beautifully illustrated, so unique and educational. Uh, this title was actually out of our winter rotation last year. I rotate our books a lot, especially the seasonal books. So it'll be super fun to dive into this again. And lastly, winter poems. We've been reading out of this a lot this season and we'll read a few more as this small hibernation study will wrap up our winter themed studies until next winter um, because after valentine's day we like to move on to black history for a few weeks and in march we start all things gardening as we prepare for our own garden being that we're in florida and the weather starts warming up around that time our beloved oversized Strathmore drawing pad for making cards and other worksheets I've created for a main lessons block book and I'll show you that shortly. Here we have our Windsor and Newton watercolor pigments for making those Valentine's Day card and any other art that the kids might want to create. While we're working on this basket, Bella will be creating her sixth multiplication flower. She uses paper out of the drawing pad and a combination of these beeswax sticks and block crayons for her flowers. Eight millimeter thick wool felt pink for a heart crown or headband that we want to make. And the white is to, uh, to be the backing for a little wall hanging that we want to create for Valentine's Day. Here's an example of a project we started last year's spring. Hopefully we'll complete this year. So we'll felt hearts here with our wool roving, stitch the hearts onto the white uh, eight millimeter felt, add a stick and some twine. Uh, follow me on Instagram to see all of these handcrafts and uh, art in real time. So in the basket are some basic supplies for all these handcraft projects, various scissors, needle felting tools, uh, our needles for embroidery, the thread, and wool roving. And all the foam blocks you see in here are the foam pads for needle felting. Luna insisted I pick up a pack of these paper doilies at Dollar Tree, and so I figured that we can use these for poetry tea time, also for making Valentine's Day cards, in this uh, plastic sandwich bag, I have some materials for a sensory bin. So we have some synthetic rose petals, um, different like acrylic type of hearts, uh, and then these little plastic containers for scooping and, and just putting other small parts in them. And so I am going to put together a sensory bin or more of a sensory bowl because it will have water for Luna to make Valentine's Day inspired nature soup. I'll also um, throw in some twigs and acorns and things like that from the backyard. All right, so back to the drawing pad. Again, we're going to make our Valentine's Day cards and multiplication flower. I created a few math and writing prompts like worksheets out of this drawing paper and then we're going to tear them out of this pad and bind them together to make like a small Valentine's Day main lessons book. In the story of the Valentine Bears, Mrs. Bear goes through a sequence of preparations for Valentine's Day. So this prompt says, and you might not be able to read um, my handwriting as it's done in pencil, uh, but up top it says, how will you prepare for Valentine's Day? And then I created several lines uh, for handwriting and Bella is to write a few sentences on how she will prepare for Valentine's Day. So I did the same on this next worksheet. I created the handwriting lines and I do this with block crayons, by the way. And I left a blank space up top for Bella to create an illustration. So Bella will pick a passage from the story. For example, Mr. Bear's snores drifted from the den and she smiled. Mr. Bear could sleep through just about anything. So she will write a few sentences, um, which will work as copy work. She'll make an illustration, but then I will have her underline parts of speech or parts of grammar. So for example, a proper noun will be in blue, a common noun is in red, verb will be underlined in yellow, and an adjective in green. 
The next is for all of us to discuss and work on together after reading uh, The Snowy Nap and Over and Under the Snow. Uh, so we're going to list um, and categorize animals who hibernate, migrate, and animals who adapt. Uh, and then as a fun hands-on activity, we'll probably use loose parts and dough, cardboard, recycled materials, whatever it is the kids want to get their hands on to make a diorama of a den. Moving on to a few math worksheets here. This first one is for my littlest Luna, and she will roll dice, count the dots on the dice, and cover each heart. So she can use loose parts to cover the heart or color it. In this, she's practicing numeracy, so one-to-one -one correspondence as she counts the dots on the die uh, and number identification in um, covering the number. For my Noah, he will fill in the missing numbers up to 35. So again, this is good for number identification and number sequencing. And a math worksheet for Bella, besides her multiplication of flower, she will do this color by number. So she's to solve all of these multiplication equations and color it according to the sum and the key. I'm also going to bring out our Montessori letter tiles from the bin uh, for Luna because they're pink and they're matchy matchy with our basket so she'll appreciate that. I'm going to prompt Luna to do a scavenger hunt around the house with things that begin with the letter to the tile that she draws from the basket. Bella and Noah used to love that game years ago and I haven't played it with Luna yet so she's going to enjoy that. Every year, I also like to include some of our Montessori Pink Series printables during Valentine's Day because, again, pink. And these will totally fit in the basket, so I'm going to slip these in there. Uh, these are for Noah. He's the one that's currently using this material. I'll hand Noah the easiest for warm-up and confidence building. And so these are the shorter sentences with the images to use as context clues. And then we'll move on to the pile of longer sentences without uh, images and no context clues. And then using our wooden alphabet, Noah will um, fill in the missing vowel on these uh, CVC flashcards to make CVC words. This is super easy for Bella, but she tends to enjoy these uh, type of like fill-in uh, grammar activities. So I'm sure she'll work through this pile uh, with him as well. All right, so moving into our type of reference books, I want to share this one with you in case you want some inspiration yourself. This is Holidays Wild and Free by Ainsley Arment. And there is a short section in here with some ideas for our Valentine's Day. So we've got uh, Mindful Love Baskets. That's a very uh, thoughtful and sweet idea. Wildflower Valentine's Day paper cedars. Uh, that's a pretty common one that you can find on Pinterest as well. Cupid arrows, we've made these a few years ago. And royal icing cookies, which my teen has on her list. And the last one is kindness rocks, which are always super fun and thoughtful to make as well. I'm going to list this title for you down below just in case you're interested. We'll be referencing through this DK Complete Children's Cookbook and I'm going to encourage our little chef Bella to pick a recipe out out of the parties recipes section of this book for poetry tea time. So what she does with this is uh, I have her make an ingredients list. She has a notebook for recipes. And then she'll accompany me to the market. She loves pulling up the calculator on my phone so that we can keep a budget. She does that whether she's shopping for a recipe or not, even just on regular grocery trips. So there's one in here that caught my eye specifically. I'm sure she'll agree with me. It's very Valentine's Day-esque and it's a very berry gelatin recipe. It just seems like a very proper snack for poetry tea time. 
And that leads us into our last reference type book, the Tea Party book, which I know I've also exhausted sharing about. But we do poetry tea times for just about every holiday or festival. Our last one was actually a while ago. Uh, we didn't do one for the Lunar New Year. We did one for Christmas, our Christmas Around the World unit study, and that was lots of fun with snacks from all around the world. But a few years ago, we did reference to this a Valentine tea, and so we've already made the heart sandwiches for tea time. We did put together like this decor for the table where it's a heart on a popsicle stick, but it was supposed to be a menu and we didn't do that last time. So I think this time we might use the paper doilies uh, to write out the menu uh, for tablescape. All right, my sweet friends, I hope that you were able to gather some ideas for Valentine's Day or maybe for your own take on this uh, gentle homeschooling basket method. I also hope that this video offers a sense of consent maybe or comfort in that not all seasons or times call for a rigorous or traditional textbook style of education. There will be time for that and I always say middle school is for middle school, high school is for high school and being that I have my own high schoolers now, believe me, the time will come for the rigor. In choosing home education, we chose freedom, and so let's live like it and let's exercise that right. In that homeschooling is not a everyone fits one mold of learning styles.